us therefore with confidence pray to God our Heavenly Father the giver of life that he will raise her to perfection in the company of the saints. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of grace and glory, we remember before you this day our sister Isla Adele. We thank you for giving her to us, her family and friends, to know and love as a companion on our earthly pilgrimage. In your boundless compassion, console us to mourn. Give us faith to see in death the gate of eternal life, so that in quiet confidence we may continue our course on earth until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We can start. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me will be like yesterday and today. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out the Lord gives and the Lord takes away blessed be the name of the Lord my brothers and sisters we are gathered together this evening for a service of celebration for the life of Isla Adele Coppin. We join our voices now together as we sing our opening hymn through all the changing scenes of life.
Let us pray. Almighty God, we remember before you today your servant, Isla Adele, and we pray that having opened to her the gates of larger life, you will receive her more and more into your joyful service, that with all who have served you in the past, she may share in the eternal victory of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Kindly be seated. At this time, we would now receive the eulogy by her son, Dane Coffin. Good afternoon, everybody. This afternoon, we are gathered here to pay our final respects and bid farewell to my dear mother, Isla Adele Coppin, who was born on October 19, 1939, and October 13, 2021, six days before her 82nd birthday. My mother lived in Bayfi, St. Philip, and was the heir of ten children born to the late Carmen and Alan Coppin. She leaves her two younger siblings, Annis and Livingston, also known as Livy, to mourn her passing. She was predeceased by siblings Clandis, Edward, known as Tom Pollard, Eustace, Garfield, Kenneth, known as Tyler or Casanova, and St. Clair, also known as Mark Milton. My mother was a member of this church, St. Catherine's. She was caring, helpful, unselfish, and was part of a closely knit family. She played a significant role in keeping the family together by assisting her parents with financial support for her siblings. She instilled in me the importance of having a sound education and never let up on that. My mother believed that there is good in everything and in every person. Therefore, she was able to relate to everybody. I received her primary school education at St. Mark's Girls School in Blaisville, St. Philip, where she participated in many of the end of term plays under the direction of her favorite teacher, Miss Hunt. From primary school, she went to Industry High School, known to many as Miss King School, where she studied commercial subjects such as shorthand and typing. And this laid the platform for her career path in the secretarial field. After leaving school during the 1960s, she worked briefly, sorry, during the 1950s, she worked briefly as a nurse at the psychiatric hospital. She then went on to work at the Labor Department, Lands and Surveys Department, and the Registration Office in the career path she really loved, carrying out secretarial duties 
and ultimately sup supervi supervising a team of stenographers. Colomore, Wendell Seeley, and the late Horatio Cook, and Sir, Ar Sir Harcourt Lewis. The late 1970s also saw changes in the secretarial field. The typewriter was being replaced by computers with word processing programs such as WordPerfect. And in order to keep on top of her game, my mother attended computer processing classes after work and got home late at night. This proved how focused she was at maintaining the high quality of work for which she was well known. My mother provided the family with a car during the mid-1960s. She also bought a television during the late 1960s, and it was one of the first televisions in their field. This television not only brought entertainment to the family in the house, but to the many persons who took up any vantage point at the windows in the living room where the television was located. I remember as a little boy, could be about three years old, people would start placing soft stone blocks on the ground below the windows from as early as 5 p.m. on evenings in order to see the television when it was turned on. Persons came from neighboring uh, districts such as Bayesville, Tickets, College Savannah, Marleyville, and Merritt to watch television shows such as Bonanza and Barnabas Collins. No one was turned away from watching the television at the windows, and this form of entertainment resulted in those persons forming many long-standing long friendships with the Coppin family, even up to today. My father, Anthony Waldron, said my mother was a very independent person and despite her excellent performance at work, she made sure that her only child, which is me, did not lack for anything while continuing to assist with supporting her family. As a little boy at Christmas time, my mother would decorate the Christmas tree and give me gifts to place under the tree. I would get a kite and an Easter egg on Easter weekends. She would buy fireworks for Independence Day for the whole family to enjoy. I was sure to get a gift for my birthday. Anytime that I was getting naughty, she would remind me that she worked at the mental hospital and she could deal with the mad and the tame. Enough said about that. She made sure that I attended Sunday school and she helped me learn recitations which had to be recited at Christmas and Easter programs. When I attended school, she made sure I did my homework and helped me to learn hymns or psalms when required as part of schoolwork. As I approached the time to set the common entrance exam, she made sure that I went to extra lessons on Saturday mornings. Needless to say, she was overjoyed when I passed for Harrison College. She also made sure I went to church and got confirmed as I got older and I got confirmed at St. Catherine's. After leaving school, it was time for me to focus on a career. After much thought and discussion, I opted for the accounting field. And when I was not working at the time, I enrolled in the accounting program, which is the Certified General Accountants Program. And my mother paid my course fees until I got a job and could pay the course fees on my own. My mother retired from the Barbados National Bank in 1994 and took care of her mother ever since then. Every day my mother would, would leave her house 
which was less than 200 yards away from, from my grandmother's house, and go to prepare her meals for her. This happened until her mother passed away in April 1998. After building her house during the mid-70s, my mother never missed a day visiting her mother's house, except on those occasions when she traveled overseas to places such as USA, Canada, and Puerto Rico to do some shopping. As her health deteriorated due to old age and dementia, she had to be hospitalized within the last three weeks before she passed away peacefully at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital. Special thanks to Annis, her sister, and Elmer Coppin, her sister-in-law, who prepared meals during the time she was not well. Livy, her brother, who was a major pillar of support and assistance to me as well. Sharon Wiff, who was her home helper. Dr. Babu Verbali, her general doctor. The doctors and nurses who attended to her at Coverley Medical Center and the QEH and Dr. Brownwell Glassford and the nurses of the well Clear Golden Jewel Senior Citizens Home who would have attended to her. May she rest in peace and rise in glory. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here to give a tribute to Isla. I call it Isla in memoriam. Humility, gentility, simplicity, generosity, and beauty. A unique smile in any eye, not a styler. That was her brother. Any profiler, that was Ida. No frills or curves, the envy of St. Mark's girls. Just grace and poise, the crush of St. Mark's boys. In true confession, God knows I was one. Fresh boys reported by her got licks, though the schools were not mixed. A lovely era that had been ended with her transfer to Miss Keen. Sharp hand and typing of those days made her Secretary of Village and Home Affairs. This was the catalyst for an outstanding career in civil service. At Verona, migrants she recruited were all eager and all suited. For each one relocated to her ever grateful to be a proud returning national. She could have been taken for registrar, how she promoted efficiency and HR. She became a single mother of a singular son like no other one, sponsored by her from diaper to book, sponsoring him herself for every course he took. For us, for us, she left demented, but for her, fully contented to have seen her devoted tuition blossom into fertile fruition. May she be blessed with rest eternal and be granted light perpetual. May she rise in a shroud of glory ever etched in her memory. Valley, oil, valley. Thank you.
First Bible reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 50 to 58. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed for this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality so when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption and this mortal shall have put on immortality then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here ends the reading.
Good afternoon, church. The second Bible reading is taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you into myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas says unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus says unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the light, and, the, and life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here ends this reading.
This evening we have gathered in this sacred place of worship to give God thanks for the life of Isla Adele. A woman who would have come into your life at varying points. And today as you come, you remember where and how and what may have been your interaction with her. You will have heard some of the things about the sister in the eulogy done by her son. These memories etch in your mind. I now join with you in this service to give God thanks for her life and what it meant to those of you who knew her. Join in with me in this act of worship is my Reverend Sister, Reverend Kathy Ann Weatherburn. And I believe that every time we stand before members or families such as we are doing today, well, I am standing and she's sitting at the moment, we ask God, what do we or what would he have us to say that would offer a sense of comfort and encouragement to you as you grieve your loss. For in this time, we not only say goodbye and offer our support to the family, but services such as this also offers for all of us present the opportunity to reflect and to review and to refocus our own lives. We are given the opportunity to reflect and find solace in the hymns and scriptures and the spoken words. This evening, I invite you for a few moments to Turn your attention to a song which I have been holding dear to over the past few days. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other else is sinking sand. You see, these past months for us in the world and certainly in our country of Barbados, can be likened to sinking or shifting sand. As we continue to come to grips, not only with the death of our loved ones, but the whole issue of COVID and what it is impacting on our lives. And if that is not enough, the fact that in our own personal life, when we lose a mother, our father, our good friend, even when we are affected in areas such as loss of jobs and health issues, it is hard for us. It is like shifting sand. And when death comes a knocking at our door, because of the restricted protocols, families are unable to be present with us this evening. We are unable to mourn as we are accustomed to. These life issues, my brothers and sisters, which are coming at us so hard and fast, they can plow through our peaceful surroundings scattering all semblance of tranquility and tossing. I am sure that then, if I were to ask him now how it feels with the loss of your mom, as much as he is standing strong 
as her only son, he would probably say to us, boy, things might be crumbling or things seem not so right. But yet, Dan continues to hold fast onto some things his mom taught him. The fact that he can lean on Jesus Christ. This evening as we say goodbye, this evening as we try to answer the unanswered questions, I propose that it is not only the death of our loved ones that causes us to lose our footing, but it is in moments like these when we, who are left behind, our calls to stop in our tracks and reflect on the frailty of life, our own life, and how we will face our own death and what will happen after death. Questions such as these can also cause us to tremble in our own footing. But how do we, or what can we do when death comes to our house, when a life issue causes us to lose our footing? What can we do that will sustain us during these times? I want to offer to you today the God that you heard about in the gospel the one that offers to us his peace. We can build our lives on a foundation that can't be shaken. We can build our lives on the promises of the man called Jesus Christ. In that passage, Jesus understood what happens when death comes a calling at our door as he was preparing for his own death and wanting to share some information with the people who he would have worked and ministered with during his time on earth. He shared with them that he was the one on which they could stand when life crisis comes. This evening, uh, this absence of peace that he talks about is a wake-up call. It's a reminder that we have been relying on our own strength. The peace that Jesus offers cannot be found in the temporal things of life. And so then, and all of you who have come to say goodbye, I want to remind you that it is not the medicine that can give you the peace or the footing that you need to carry you through for the rest of the days ahead. It is not in friends even though they have come and family members. It is not in merriment for in the, these days you often see people coming to funeral service with what they might consider the things to make them happy to know the feeling. But that too has its limits. It cannot be found in wealth or any other thing. It is found only in Jesus Christ, the one who gives to us his peace. So this evening, if you find yourself on sinking or shifting sand with no peace of mind, you don't have to stay there. For Jesus reminds us that he offers us his peace. He is our solid rock. The psalm that was sung reminds us that he is the one who walks with us through our valleys. He is the one who will restore our souls. 
That is what he wants to do. That is what he wants to do with any man or woman who may seem all cool and calm on the outside. But in their hearts right now, there's a fear. The fear of death. The fear of the uncertainty of this time. The fear of the crisis surrounding us. Even the fear of death when the time comes. Jesus, as I said in the gospel, knew that his death was near, so he took the time to prepare his disciples for that day and for the days after. He did not concentrate on his feeling, but rather sought to look after their needs, their fears. And so he says, let not your heart be troubled, Trust in God. Trust also in me. This evening, I wish I could tell you that bad things don't happen to good people. But this is the world in which we live. But Jesus did not promise that he would take the tragedies of this life away and turn them into good. Rather, he says to us, Seek me, the rock which is higher than all these things, and my peace will comfort and sustain you and cover you, no matter what may happen right now or in the future. These words of assurance then, Dana and all of your loved ones, we offer you this evening in the time of the death of your mother. Today we will speak of death because that is what we are here to acknowledge and recognize. But for those of us left behind after her mortal remains are placed in the ground, the God of peace wants to be your companion. He wants to be the one on whom you build your life. So as we say farewell to our sister, we are confident this evening that the Good Shepherd is right here in this service of thanksgiving, waiting to assure us of his comforting presence during our, our crisis moment. In this, of our, our moments of fear and grief, he offers us peace and the security that is ours when we come to know him in a personal way. So don't be tempted to remain and keep your eyes fixed on the circumstances and try to manage them with your own strength, but rather Place your hand in the hand of the man from Galilee. Find your rock in Jesus Christ. In your moments when no one else is there and your conscience are all that you have, remember my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. In closing, then, I offer you Jesus, the Prince of Peace, the one who is our rock in this world, and after our journey is ended, will be the one to receive us. We once again give thanks for the life of our sister. We are thankful for all that she would have done for us and in her ministry to those whom she loved. We acknowledge her touch and the memories that she has left. And now we commit this family and all her friends that are gathered here 
in person and those watching via our streaming technology to find comfort and encouragement in the spoken word, in the hymns that will be sung or were sung, in the praise that will be offered, but more so we offer you Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. Amen. of heaven and earth, and in believing Jesus Christ, his only Son, O Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Virgin Mary, and suffered the Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died on the earth, he descended to the dead, and the third day he rose again, he ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, he will come again. There is a session I praise. Your response is hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your chosen people together in one communion. In the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Give to your whole church in heaven and on earth your life and your peace. Hear, hear us, Lord. May all who have been baptized into Christ's death and resurrection die to sin and raise the newness of life. And may we with him pass through the grave and gate of death to our joyful resurrection. Hear us, Lord. Grant to us who are still in our pilgrimage and who walk as yet by faith that your Holy Spirit may lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. Hear us, Lord. Grant to your faithful people pardon and peace that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. Grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrows on you, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead in the comfort of a holy and certain hope, and in the joyful expectation of eternal life with those they love.
Lord Jesus Christ, we commend to you our sister Isla, who was reborn by water and the Spirit in holy baptism. Grant that her death may recall to us your victory over death and be an occasion for us to renew our trust in your Father's love. Give us, we pray, the faith to follow where you have led the way and where you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit to the ages of ages. Amen. Give rest, O Christ, to your servant with your saints. We have sorrow and pain are no more. Let us say, life everlasting. You only are immortal, the creator and maker of humankind. And we are mortal formed of the earth, and the earth shall we return. For so you ordained when you created me, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, to your servants with your sins. Where sorrow and pain are no more, neither sign, but life everlasting. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trust us against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Then in his kingdom, power, and the power, and now and forever. Amen. Let us commend our sister Isla to the mercy of God, our Maker and Redeemer. Deliver your servant. Isla, O Sovereign Lord Christ, from all evil and set her free from every bond of sin, that she may rest with all your saints in the eternal habitation where with Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend our sister Isla. Acknowledge we beseech you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive her into the arms of your mercy, in the blessed rest of eternal peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.
our sister and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, with whom still live the spirits of those who die in the Lord, and with whom the souls of the faithful are in joy and felicity, we give you heartfelt thanks for the good example of all your servants. Stay course in faith. Now find rest and refreshment. May we, with all who have died in the true faith of your holy name, have perfect My sin of the bliss. My sin of the bliss. Of this glory is taught. No depart but the whole is nailed. It is well. For me be it Christ. No pang shall be mine. It is well. For me be it Christ, for me be it Christ, It is well with my soul. But Lord, it's for you.
It is well. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his spirit, Washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. Praising my Savior all the day long perfect submission perfect delight angels descending echoes of mercy this is this is my story Perfect submission, all is at rest. I, in my Savior, am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above, filled with his goodness, lost in his love. the day long. When the roll is called up yonder. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no more. Morning breaks eternal bright and fair. When the slave on earth shall gather over on the other shore. And the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. On that bride. When the dead in Christ shall rise, the glory of his resurrection share. When his chosen ones shall gather to their home beyond the sky, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there. When the roll is called up yonder, 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 I'll be there. Let us labor for the master from the dawn to setting sun. 
Let us talk of all his wondrous love and care. When the road is all of yonder, when the road is all of yonder, when the road is all of yonder, blessed Jesus, hold my hand. As I travel, as I travel through him, go ahead, to this pilgrim land, the friend who walks with me, lead me safely to the sea, King Sam, it is the cry of Calvary. This will be my prayer, Lord, each day. Help me do the best I can. For I need thy life to guide me day and night. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Blessed Jesus, hold my hand. Yes.
joy in heaven. There was joy in heaven. There was joy in heaven. When he saw the world to flee, the Lord of might and mercy keep, shouts of joy were heard on high, and the stars sang The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Remember, O oh Lord, this your servant who has gone before us. With the sign of faith, and now rest in the sleep of peace. According to your promises, grant to her and to all who rest in Christ refreshment, light, and peace. Through the same Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. And the blessing of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest and remain with all of you this day and evermore. Amen. Yeah. You know.